Hello and welcome in this video. Today, we will see together how to evaluate the power consumption of the STM32U0 with the ST-Link V3 PWR. To do it in a simple way, we will run an example available in the STM32U0 Cube firmware. Before begin, just a quick overview of what we need for this end zone. On software side, we will use STM32 Cubamix to generate the example project. As IDE, we will use STM32 Cube IDE. We also need STM32 Cube Monitor Power software to be able to measure consumption with the ST-Link V3 PWR. And we also need a terminal to print and select some data from the example via UseArt. On my side, I will use TerraTerm. On hardware side, we will use the Nucleo U083RC to run the application and the ST-Link V3 PWR to measure the STM32 consumption. So, for this end zone, we will run the PWR mode selection example available on the STM32 Cube U0 firmware. This application will allow us to simply configure and run each low power mode available for the STM32U0. To do it, the application will use the USART communication via the USB-C cable to print in the terminal the list of all the power modes we can use on this example. We just need to select one of them to run it. The objective at the end is to measure the microcontroller power consumption using the ST-Link V3 PWR and learn how to connect it on the Nucleo to do it. So this enzyme will split in four parts. First, we will run the application on the Nucleo together. After that, I will explain how to connect the ST-Link V3 PWR on the Nucleo board to be able to measure the STM32 consumption. Then we will measure the real STM32 U0 consumption. And at the end, we will compare the consumption measurement with the datasheet value. So first, we will open CubeMX to select the example. Click on Access to Example Selector. And we will write the Nucleo name on this section. So on our case, it's Nucleo U0 83RC. So here you can see the list of all the examples available for this Nucleo. On our side, we will use an example for the PWR section. So here it is, PWR mode selection. Just click on it and click on Start Project in External ID. On the pop-up window, you just need to select the right ID, on our side we will use STM32 Cube ID, and click on Install. By this way, Cubemix will automatically open Cube ID with the imported project. So now the project is fully imported. Okay. If you open the application and user folder, you will see the main application file. You can find on the main.c the main function of the application. On the console.c file, you can find all the functions which manage the user communication for the hyper terminal. And on system underscore config.c, you will find all the main and basic configuration for each low power mode. So let's build the application by clicking on the Hammer icon. There is no error, no warning, everything is good. So now we need to connect our Nucleo to the laptop. And now we can run the application on the Nucleo by clicking on the play icon just here. Okay, so now to verify if the application is running, 
We need to open the terminal to see if the user communication is working. So you need to configure the serial port with the right COM port. On my side is this one. And I will configure the serial settings with these parameters. On my side, I only need to change the baud rate and click on new settings. After that, to verify, we will restart the application by clicking on the reset button, the dark one. And now we see on the terminal all the low power mode available for the U0 for this example. So for this end zone, we'll measure the STM32U0 consumption with the ST-Link V3 PWR. These tools can be used as a basic ST-Link for debugging purpose, but it also includes a new features that allow you to supply and measure the target current consumption. This ST-Link V3 PWR has a right dynamic range from few nanohemp to 500 microhemp, so it will allow us to measure the consumption of each U0 low power mode. If you need more information about this ST-Link V3 PWR, please refer to the full presentation video. The link is in the description. So as I said, the ST-Link V3 PWR will supply the STM32 U0. The goal of using the ST-Link V3 PWR is to focus on the MCU consumption and not on the entire nuclear board. To do it, the ST-Link V3 PWR will be the power source for the MCU. To supply the stm 32 u 0 with the ST-Link V3 PWR, you need to connect the out pin of the ST-Link to the VDD pin of the MCU. To do it, we just need to remove the jumper number 5, GP5, on the nuclear board and connect the out of the ST-Link on the left pin of this jumper. And of course, we need to connect the ground of the ST-Link to the ground of the nucleo. We also need to remove on the top of the nucleo the jumper number 9, GP9, to cut the link of the end reset signal between the STM32U0 and the internal ST-Link of the nuclear board. If we don't do it, we will see another consumption. Just be careful, on this example, we have a little limitation due to the fact we use the USB-C cable for the user communication between the nucleo and the computer. As I said before, the ST-Link V2 power is used to supply the MCU, so we have a ground reference from the ST-Link V2 power, but we also have another ground reference from the laptop via the USB-C cable. By this way, it produces a noise which prevents good measurement at low consumption. For example, in this case, the average consumption of the standby mode will be 25 microamp, which is very big for the U0. To prevent it, when we need to measure the consumption at low level, we just need to unplug the USB-C cable to only have one ground reference in the nuclear board, and then we can have the right consumption. For the same example on standby mode, the average consumption will be 135 nanohemp. So let's do it in practice. So we need to remove the jumper number 5 in the middle of the nucleo to cut the link between the VDD of the MCU and the supply of the rest of the nucleo board and the jumper number 9 to cut the end recent link between the MCU and the internal ST-Link. After that, we can take our ST-Link V3 PWR, connect the out pin to the VDD pin of the MCU, so the left pin of the jumper 5, and the ground to the ground. So now the setup is installed, we will open Cube Monitor Power to manage the ST-Link V3 PWR. So, when STM32 Cube Monitor Power is open, 
and your ST-Link V3 PWR connected to your PC, you just need to select it on the select board section. My side is this COM port, and I will click on take control. You will see now a panel configuration that allow you to select some parameters for the sampling frequency, for example, or the acquisition time for the consumption measurement. And also some parameters like the input voltage delivered by the estelling V3 PWR to the MCU. If I take my camera here, so first we'll verify that the input voltage is 3V3, so it's good by default. And I will put the acquisition time in an infinite loop and sampling frequency to a higher frequency. So now the Estelink V3 PWR is ready to be used. And first, we need to click on Power On to supply the MCU. By clicking on Power On, you will see the out and aux LED of the Estelink V3 PWR switch on on green. That means that your target is well supplied by the Estelink. So now we can select a low power mode on the STM32U0 and measure its consumption with the ST-Link V3 PWR. So now open again your terminal to see the list of all the power modes available. And for this first example, I will use the number 3, the standby mode plus RTC plus SRAM2 retention. To select it, just tape 3 on the terminal and press enter. You will see a little message that confirms that the mode you, se you are selected is running. So before measure the consumption, as we saw before, don't forget to unplug the USB-C cable to have only one ground reference on the nuclear board. In this mode, the stm 2 u 0 core is sleeping and all the peripherals are turning off excepting the bore and the internal watchdog. For this typical example with the RTC and the SRAM retention, we need to use a low power regulator to maintain the SRAM retention and the LSC or LSI to clock the RTC. The target consumption here is near 435 nanoamp. Let's verify it in practice. On stm 32 q monitor power, just need to start the acquisition here. You can stop when you want. And to be more accurate, you, click, you can click on Show Report just here and select an area you want it to measure, for example, this one. And you will see just here the average consumption of all the selected time frame. In our case, we are very near of the target consumption, so everything is good. You can see on the graph some peaks they due to the VDD scan by the Brunot reset. So now we'll run another roll power mode. So open your terminal and don't forget to plug again the USB-C cable. Proceed to a reset of the application by pushing the black button. And now we will select the number one, the standby, alone. It could be interesting to compare with the previous measurement to see the impact of the RTC and the SRAM retention on the consumption. So, as we've done before, press one and press enter. You can see that the power mode selected is standby. Cool. Don't forget to unplug again the USB-C cable for the measurement and go back on Q-Monitor Power. Launch the acquisition. You can stop when you want and select the right time frame, for example, this one, and you will see the average consumption in near 133 nanohemp. So now it could be interesting to verify this value on the datasheet to see if the consumption target is respected. 
to do it, just need to open the STM32U083 datasheet, open the table of contents and go on electrical characteristics, operating condition, and click on supply current characteristics. On it, you can scroll down a little bit and you will see for each mode, for example, this one run, low power run, in different configuration, the target consumption um, for several clock speed. In our case, we wanted to verify the consumption in standby mode. So we need to scroll down. And here we are. On the last example, we'll use a standby without anything. So we'll focus on this part, focus, RTC is disabled. We are no independent watchdog. And on our case, in the example, the unable ULP is not set. Our power supply is 3 volt to 3. And we operate an ambient temperature, so 25 degrees. So the target consumption is 135 nanohemp. If we go back on cumulator power, what we measure is 133 nanohemp. So it's very nice. Thank you for following this end on. Do not hesitate to play with all other low power mode available on this example. And see you in another video.